Hey, Marie, just so you know, you're on mute. Okay, now it's better. <laughs> okay. No worries. Um, so hi everyone and welcome again to today's lunch and learn session um to anyone that's new and don't know me my name is marie i currently work as a principal test automation engineer at news uk um if you want to uh, visit my blog and read about uh, my thoughts on testing and test automation um you can find it at mariedrake.com uh, if you have any further questions after um, this session, you can add me um, in Twitter at mcruzdrake. And I've, I've also added my LinkedIn profile here. So uh, feel free to connect with me um, if, uh, if you want. Um, so in this session, we'll look at how we can um, mac, uh, mock XHR or API requests using Cypress and look at how it can be um, useful for our um, test automation. Cool. Um, so I always like to start with um, a recap of the other things that uh, we've covered as part of the Cypress Lunch and Learn session. Uh, so, you know, we've covered a lot of things already, such as how to use Cypress for your functional tests, for your API testing, and even visual testing with Apply tools. And the previous Lunch and Learn session, we looked at um, how we can test iframes with Cypress. Uh, as uh, Sudili mentioned, uh, if you haven't seen the previous Cypress Lunch and Learn sessions, you can head over to the Expertise Recruitment um, YouTube page, which I've already linked here. Uh, they also have other videos from the other meetups um, from TACFO and Quality Advocates. So if you want to find out um, about the other meetups as well, you can just um, watch the video recordings. Cool. So first off, let's talk about what a mock API is. Um, a mock API is essentially um, an imitation of a real API, which contains uh, a set of expected responses that you define when a specific request is made. There's a lot of uh, flexibility involved with a mock API, um, but we must also ensure that we must explore and understand the real API correctly so we can create the mock API successfully. Um, if we look at this simple diagram here uh, that I've added, so normally with the front-end application, uh, it it uh, communicates to a sort of backend server to get the data that it needs. So in this example, if our front-end application requires data to list a set of users, it will just send a request to the backend, and then the backend server will then um, reply with a JSON data, for example, that contains a list of expected um, users. Now, on the other hand, if we're doing mocking, so rather than the front-end application communicating uh, to the real API, uh, we're just going to reroute all the requests here in our mock API. So the mock API is essentially um, a copy of the real expected response, but uh, we don't actually make any, um, any um, communication to the backend server. So um, mock APIs, they can actually speed up the development and testing phase, especially if the feature that you're trying to test is still um, in development and is subjected to a lot of breaking changes. Cool. So in this slide, I just want to talk about some of the advantages um, into actually testing the real API. So with the real API, um, the first benefit is obviously we're testing the real behavior. So we're much closer to what our actual users, you know, see. Um, and as such, we can catch other issues such as performance. Um, with the real API as well, we have more confidence that the critical parts that we need to verify as per the specification is uh, checked correctly. And it's also much um, like straightforward to test. You just need to know what the environment is that you're going to test and then, you know, use tools such as Postman or other um, API tools that you need to then make a query um, into the actual API that you're testing. 
Now, on the other hand, with um, mock APIs, so um, this is especially useful, as I mentioned, if the API that you're trying to integrate with is still unstable. So it can speed up the development and also the testing because you can plan what the scenarios you want uh, to verify in advance. Um, and because we're not integrating with a real environment, it's also much quicker to run. So that can really help in providing a fast feedback loop um, on the earlier development lifecycle. And um, it can also um, simulate, you know, delays. So if you want to um, like simulate any delays on um, the way your API will return uh, the data, then you can easily simulate that with a mock API. And also because um, you're actually um, defining what the expected results are with mock APIs, you essentially avoid any flaky tests in the, fu in, uh, in the future because you know that the results are always deterministic and it's always um, going to return the same um, like responses if you make a specific call. Um, with the mock API as well, so if you need to test different scenarios and different status code, so imagine if you're testing a real API and you need to test what your application would look like if the API that you're integrating with um, is returning um, a 400 or a 500 status code. Now, you might imagine that with a real API, it's you know much difficult because you need to actually um, have that um, real time, so you need to um, test that status code um, in real time, but it might be difficult because there's a lot of different um, like options to consider. But with the mock API, you just have to specify the actual condition that you know will cause the API to return a 500 or like different status code. But again, with this, you need to explore the API um, first before you can um, easily you know test different status code. Cool. Um, so now that we've seen the advantages, let's now look at the disadvantages. So first of all, with a real API, your tests will be slower to run. Um, so, you know, because this is integrated on a real environment and requires a dedicated, um, a dedicated environment, you know, to be up, there might be some network or some latency issues. Um, it can also cause flaky tests if the API is still in development mode. So imagine you're helping, you know, a team uh, build, you know, a new feature and you've already done the front end um, application and you've already written tests for it. Um, and if you've added these tests as part of your build pipeline, um, imagine then if the API that you've integrated with, you know, has pushed a broken change and um, they've, you know, they've um, caused their service to be down. So your test will be affected as well. And it, um, a flaky test will cause a build pipeline to fail. So it might even cause your feature to be blocked, um, to be, for example, merged to master because the build pipeline is failing. So I've already touched upon that, you know, with the real API, you're making the application that you're testing dependent on other services. So if you have a lot of um, third-party services that you integrate with um, and you wrote tests against, you know, these different um, like services, if one of them is down, then, you know, your, your application um, will also be um, affected. So with mock APIs, um, the first disadvantage that I can see is because you're creating, you know, another um, API, there's more effort that you need to, um, to do in terms of creating and maintaining it. Um, and because you have to make sure that the mock API is always up to date with the real APIs. Um, this is a slightly um, challenging as well because sometimes changes on the APIs can be um, very difficult to spot. So the downside is if you don't um, update you know, your mock APIs regularly, uh, bugs can be missed and it can be deployed to production. Um, so you need to always make sure that the mock API is always to date. Cool. So the question here is, um, should you mock, you know, APIs or not when you're testing? So we've seen that you, you know, you can't just rely on a mock API entirely. So um, it's not 
um, the answer to all our um, testing problems um, because there's still limitations as you've seen on the previous slide. What um, you can do is, you know, you can consider a hybrid approach. So what I mean by this is um, if, you know, if, if, if the features if some of the features that you are testing are already stable, then you can use the um, real API. And then you can have a subset of tests for features that are still in development, but you know you just want to have um, a um, an, 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 an earlier feedback loop that on the different tests that you know you've added um, that the API is going to um, response um, um, is is going to respond on the same manner that you're expecting. So um, definitely use um, hybrid. Uh, don't just you know pick one over the other because um, we um, we've seen on the previous slides that there's definitely some um, limitations on both of the approach. Cool. So now. Um, you know, now that we have some basic understanding um, as to what a mock API is and how it's different um, to a real API, let's then um, translate this to Cypress world. So um, on the previous uh, Cypress lunch and learn session, um, I gave a talk as to how you can test real API endpoints with Cypress. So I've just added a code snippet here just so you can see um, how easy it is to test real APIs with Cypress. So we'll be, um, we use the built-in um, Cypress command called side.request, which by default makes a uh, get request. So in this example, um, even though it's not the best test, it's just an example one um, to show that, you know, we can make the request and then we can do the assertion afterwards. Um, if you want to learn more about this, I've also added the video link here. So uh, feel free to watch it after this talk. Cool. Um, so now that, you know, um, we've, we've seen um, that you know, Cypress can test real APIs. Let's now um, do some coding on how we can actually mock API requests with Cypress. Um, so as usual, I've added the GitHub repo link here, you know, which shows the example um, that I'll be doing today. So after this talk, um, feel free to play around with it and let me know um, if there's anything that I can do more to improve um, this repo. So having said that, I'm just going to switch to my, um, actually first, sorry, before I, I do that. So I just want to show you the um, search application that we're trying to test. So I actually used this on my previous session when we did visual testing. So um, this is just an example app that I created using React and um, it's using the Unsplash API. Uh, to get these different images um, every time a user, you know, types something. So um, with that in mind, um, I can go to my VS Code now. And in terms of the structure, um, it's, you know, um, like similar to the other Cypress Launch and Learn that I did. We have a Cypress folder here. Um, and what I've done here is um, just ignore this visual test because that was used on the previous one. So let's um, focus on this um, image search. So I've already created a um, file here, which actually tests the real endpoint. Um, I know it's a lot of code, but I'm just going to run the test and show you what's happening here. Um, Cool. So this um, two tests here are actually hitting the real API endpoint. So the first test is we're, you know, checking that, you know, if the user types in um, some random um, like string, you know, then the response that we will get is um, actually, no, that's wrong. Invalid. Okay, so the so the response that we will get is, you know, we shouldn't see any um, images being returned and we should see, you know, this text, no content found. Um, on the other hand, if the user type in um, a valid um, input, so for example here, um, we type in pancakes and, you know, we should, you know, see that 
the image gallery is filled in and it has you know the um the uh, test results um but let's imagine that you know there's um there's a new developer or a new um you know like um or um, a new qa uh, who who joined your team and they they might not have um the api key for example that they need in order to query the um the um unsplash api so on my vs code i have here um an environment variable that i've you know exported uh, let's just imagine the scenario where um we don't have this file so i'm just gonna move this to trash and then um I think if I just run it, it should. Ah, okay, no, I think because I have to build the app again. So I'm just gonna cancel this. Um, clear. Uh, and let me just open the Cypress test router again. So um, what you might see happening is, you know, um, your test will be affected if you know um there's there's some missing environment variables or um or um you know the let's just assume that the unsplash api um is not working as expected right now oh it's still working i think because i have to yeah i have to rerun my app npm start wait for it okay so now it's not working so um you see here that rather than the 200 status code we're getting a 401 so um a 401 means um i think it's unauthorized if i'm not mistaken so um because of this like you might you know see oh like what's what's going on with my test why is it failing it was just failing the other day and then now um it's you know it's it's not working so um this is where we can um do the mocking um as you know as part of our um like feature development so um what i'm going to do now is i'm going to um look into this you know file just delete this again which i forgot to do <laughs> cool um so now we want to implement you know how we can mock this api so we know that um, our test won't be affected as such so the first thing that you want to do is first you want to explore your um your api so in this case we need to um load a fixture data so we you know we can say to the mock api that okay r rather than going to the real api and getting the response i'm just giving you a um, predefined um, set of data already so the good thing is cypress has a feature called fixtures so a fixture in cypress is you know just um, a placeholder for your data so I've already, um, you know, added what my test data would be. So it's just a collection of um, 10 different images. Um, you might notice that, you know, this is all similar. Um, so what I'm expecting, you know, to happen is if I point my um, Cypress test to, you know, this data, it will just show, you know, the same image because it's a mock data. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to load um, this uh, fixture. So to do that with Cypress, you just need to do sci.fixture. So it's, it's also a built-in command. And you just need to pass the file name um, of the fixture. So in this case, my file is called um, unsplash. And um, because I want to access this um, this um, file later on my test, I want to alias it so I can um, easily uh, refer back to it if needed. So I'm just gonna do a dot as and say, um, okay, I want to reference this as unsplash data. Cool. Um, the next thing then that um, you need to do, so I'm going to introduce uh, two Cypress commands that I haven't um, introduced before. The first one is called sci.server. So 
um, what side that server means in Cypress is that it will actually start um, a test server for you. So Cypress knows that okay, there's some network request that maybe we need to um, we need to monitor or we need to um, intercept. So um, this is this is always needed whenever you want to mock a request. The next thing that you want to do is you want to call sci.root. So in here, um, we need to pass in a URL. So we need to pass in um, the request that we want you know, to mock. And the good thing about this is you, know, you can see here that there's an, exam that there's an example um, code snippet here that you can do. So in our case, we need to find out what the um, what the URL is that we want to mock. So to do that, um, just going to maybe this isn't the best one. So I need to go back to my actual app. Okay. So I'm gonna open my Dev Tools console. Um, and then on um, the Chrome Dev Tools, there is a network tab here. And I filtered it so that it will only display the XHR. So um, let's imagine that we, you know, type some tests. So it's expected that it's showing 401 because we don't have the API key. But if you see here, um, this actually shows what the, oh, make it bigger. This actually shows what the um, the URL that we want to mock. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy um, this this bit. Um, go back to Cypress. Um, what's good as well is because I only copied um, a subset of the URL, Cypress will um, automatically match it like relatively. So you don't even have to add in uh, the full URL. And then in this case, so if you look here, um, the next argument is the response that you want. So in this example here, um, they're saying that, you know, um, if there is a root that match slash users, we want it to return this data. But in my case, I don't want to hard code it. I want to use the fixture that I've added. So I'm going to reference and slash data. And the way to do that is you just need to do um, at and splash data. Cool. So if I save this and go back to our Cypress test runner, um, wrong file. It's this one that I want to run. Cool. So at the moment, nothing is happening because we haven't, you know, done a sci.visit. But I just want to um, show you guys here that, you know, um, there is a roots uh, table here. And this will um, show you the list of um, requests that is currently being tracked by Cypress. So um, we can see here that the um, URL that we want you know, to track is being added on this table and it says that it's currently being stopped. Cool. Now the next thing that, that we want is we want to actually visit our um, application. Um, so after we've done that, we also want to um, make um, a, a search. So at the moment, you know, we can see that it has successfully visited the page. And then using Cypress Selector Playground, I just want to find out what my test selector is. Um, copy that. And then we want to type some tests. So this is actually important because we're saying here that you know we're only going to match the um, the the request if it's equivalent to test. So if you type in um, like something else, so for example um, three three, and then we hit enter. Um, yeah, so it will actually say here that the um, request hasn't been stopped because the um, it didn't match what we um, specified Cypress to use. So if I change this to test, 
you'll see here that um, the message here has changed from XHR to XHR stub. So that's one way of um, checking if you've managed to stub the request successfully. Cool. And you can see here as well that um, the data that it's returning is the um, image that I've specified on my uh, fixtures. Cool. Um, so then we can just do the assertion that uh, I don't want that. I'm just going to copy it from my file here because I've specified this one. Yeah. Um, oh. Cool. So then we can do the assertion that the um, image gallery um, it should be it should be visible, and our test is now passing. Cool. And then you know you can pretty much do um, all the other assertions here. So um, if you want to you know um, do some extra like validations, then like you can feel free to do so. But um, hopefully this has um, given you an overview um, how easy it is to you know mock some requests in um, in Cypress. Cool. Um, so for the other tests, so um, let's imagine that we want to simulate the scenario where um, the Unsplash API doesn't return the data that uh, we're expecting. So um, to do this, um, I'm not going to use a fixture this time. So I'm just going to um, start off by calling the side.server. Um, and then for my root, um, I'm just going to do the same. So we want to um, also mock this here. And then rather than um, doing the unsplash data, um, maybe I just want to return an empty array, um, see if that works. Um, so we're saying that, you know, we, um, the, the API shouldn't respond with anything. So it should be an empty um, array. Um, and then just copy this one here. Oh. Oh my gosh, there you go. And then let's just see what's going to happen. Just going to add a only because I don't want this tester on. Okay, so we got an error here. Following error originated from your application code. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go to my DevTools console and actually um, inspect what the actual response is um, whenever you know we um, add some random tests. Um, so if you expand here, click response. Oh yeah. Um, I need to add back my Unsplash API key. So um, because, because we um, removed the API key here, I'm getting a 401 error. So I'm just going to quickly add back that file. Um, and that's not added on GitHub. Oh, okay. Okay, bear with me. Um, so I'm just going to add, and I need to find what my um, API key is. I think I stored it somewhere. Uh, sorry. Oh, there you go. Okay. Cool. So I'm just going to add my API key just so I can see um, what the actual response is whenever um, we, so just close my app and then start it again. Because for us to successfully, um, you know, um, so because we need to make sure that whenever we mock something, we're doing it correctly. So in this case, I don't know if it's an error from my application or it's an error um, on the way I mock the API. So just gonna go back here, okay? Um, and then type, let's say a random number. Okay, so you can inspect what the response will be if you click this um, network request. Ah, okay, so um, 
in in this case it's actually not returning an empty array but it's returning an object so um, it was an error on the way I've um, mocked the API. So what I'll do is I'm just going to copy this and then rather than just an empty array, um, pass it in as so. So because of the way Unsplash API works, um, rather than returning empty array, it's also returning, you know, some other attributes such as, you know, total is set to zero uh, and the results is set to um, an empty array. So if I go ahead and save this and then go back to our Cypress test. Okay, so now it's, it's working as expected. So um, this is why it's definitely important to explore the API first. So make sure that you know you know what the different um, responses are um, if you want to simulate different scenarios. Because um, it it might have been, for example, so if you didn't do this and then you just said um, to your team, oh, it's you know it's not working. We need to um, do some amendments on our code base. But um, you know um, we've we've seen that it's actually um, a mistake on the way that we've um, mocked the API. So definitely double check um, the API first and then make sure that you're like familiar with it before you can um, do the mocking successfully. Cool. So we can see here, you know, that nothing is displayed. And again, it's also marked as an XHR stub. So this is using um, the um, mock API here that we've um, told Cypress to use. And then for our assertion, I'm um, just going to say that this should not be visible. Cool. And now we can see that both our tests are passing. Um, so just remove that and then just run both of our tests. Cool. So um, yeah, hopefully um, you've you know seen that there's some benefits in actually you know mocking the API. Um, we've definitely done this as well at News, where we have to mock um, third-party services because we don't want to necessarily wait for those requests to finish. Um, because if you do, then it ad it actually adds additional um, loading time to your application. So um, there's some um, like different use cases that you know you can definitely apply um, mock APIs um, but as I mentioned on uh, the previous slides uh, you should use this um, um, you 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 basically should use a hybrid approach where you know you're testing um, with real APIs um, but at the same time you know uh, you know when to use mock APIs um, in some in some cases cool um, just gonna go back to the presentation Cool. So just a recap of um, what we did. So um, I introduced uh, two new commands that you can use. First is side.server and side.root. And we looked at how we can mock a specific request. And then we simulated the scenario where the API is returning data or not. Um, and we didn't do this by hitting the real API. Cool. So if you're looking for some additional um, resources after this call. So I, I actually wrote a blog post about this um, before and you know um, like um, feel free to have a read because I explained there in much more detail as to how you can do it um, step by step. And then the second resource here is actually from um, Cypress uh, documentation site. So they have a section there um, as um, as a guideline, you know, um, on what their view is into testing um, the, net, the, the network requests. Cool. And with that in mind, um, if you have any questions, I can answer them now. Oh, this will be. So a question here from Michael, um, can we make the query plus a variable so it's dynamic? Um, we can. So we can try that now, actually. Um, I haven't tried it, so we'll see if it works. Um, so I think if we just specify maybe this um, and then 
Um, I'm just going to go back to my uh, Cypress. Yep. Okay. So we, you can, ah, no, it's not working because it's not marked as XHR stub. Um, maybe we need a um, dollar, so, um, an asterisk. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we need um, the asterisk. So now if I change my test here, so rather than test, we'll type pancakes. Then hopefully, yes. So yeah, um, yeah, we can make it dynamic. So that's actually would make you know your test much more um, robust. Cool. Um, from Hamad, yes, uh, definitely you can have um, the slides. So I'll post it on the uh, Meetup channel after this. Um, from Medina, you mentioned that we shouldn't depend on third-party services, but shouldn't we stop it for example? email service is down yep so um, I agree so this is why I mentioned that you should always consider um, a hybrid approach um, so in one of our projects because we don't want to wait for external dependencies such as you know like different advert calls because we just want to basically focus on testing you know our main site then we found that you know, mocking those third-party requests is um, useful, but that doesn't mean entirely that we're mocking um, everything. So, for example, we use a um, commenting platform from um, Spot.im, which is a third-party service that provides the commenting platform for the Sun. So, we don't mock that service because we actually want to uh, be notified if the integration is down. So we can catch it on our um, dev environment. So definitely do it um, case by case basis. So don't just you know mock all the third party services. Just mock what you think is needed to be mock. Um, any additional sources or materials you would suggest to understand clearer? Um, I can only point you to um, the one that I've really specified. Um, to be honest, there's not a lot of resource for that I found uh, personally when I was mocking the API um, calls, apart from just looking at the Cypress documentation site. So that's why I wrote a blog post um, about it, um, you know, to see if it, if it will be helpful um, for anyone. So um, I'll attach all the links, you know, that might be useful on the uh, Meetup uh, group. So, Please include link in chat. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll do that now. Um, yeah, you can just visit that here. Cool. Um, so, Medina, fixture usage is for a predefined set of JSON file. What about dynamic changing data? Yeah. So, this is where you would need to um, rethink about your testing strategy. So um, if your API obviously is returning dynamic changing data, then you know you might necessarily want to verify um, the schema and the structure instead. So this is where contract testing would help. Um, the main you know reason for um, providing a predefined set of JSON file is because you just want to make sure that the front-end application that you're helping to test with um, always behave, you know, as you expected, even if, you know, the API is down. So if what you're trying to test is, you know, that the um, that the data structure is always similar or they haven't introduced breaking changes, then mocking the API is not going to be your silver bullet. You need to um, think about doing contract testing um, as well. So you need to look into other uh, different testing strategy. Um, from what else? Could we mock multiple responses, for example, for multiple API and is it done with the same side at server or every mock? Yep, so you just need to specify um, a different route here. So um, I think I should be okay to show you my, my work because we're not showing anything um, like secret anyway. So 
um, just to give you an idea, so we have this um, web automation and we have a um, command where we're mocking all the different, you know, third party requests that we don't want to wait on. So I don't need to specify, you know, different server. You can just um, specify the different routes that you want. And if it's a post request, you need to specify what the um, what the um, header is um, in here. So yep, you just have to call side side that server once and then um, write all the different routes afterwards. Cool. Um, answer that. Um, from Michael again. Can you mix real and dynamic content in a response? So you can use part real and part dummy data. Example: dummy customer loyalty cards. Um, I think you can. Um, but when you say real content, do you mean that you want to actually call the real API? Because, um, yeah, because sometimes you have to log in and it sends much data back. Mm. Yeah, I to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. I might have to look into this a bit more because when you mock a request, so it's going to match... Um, so it's 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 going to match the um the query string that you've added here um and then you're going to specify you know the data that it that it will return so i haven't tried mixing um you know calling the real api to get real data and then mocking it as well and then you know um returning a set of dummy data so um, long story short, I'm not sure, <laughs> but I, I would need to look into it. Yeah. Can we mock GraphQL queries? Um, yes, you can. Um, I haven't used Cypress though to test with GraphQL because that's a different um, that's a different um, technology. But in one of our projects that we're doing, we um, are um, doing some mocks of our GraphQL queries, but this is done using a different framework and not using Cypress. Cool. Um, I think that's pretty much all the questions uh, for today. Um, so yeah, I'll add again the slides on the Meetup um, um, channel so that everyone can um, view it after this, this call. Awesome. Well, thanks very much, Marie, uh, for another really great Lunch and Learn. Um, we are going to be running these every two weeks, so we've got, uh, I believe there's two left, so I'll be posting info on the Tactful page uh, in the coming days, so make sure you yeah. sign up uh, and continue to check out the videos as well. But thanks for coming along, everyone. Thanks again, Marie. Thank you. And we'll catch you yep. soon. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.